I haven't been a fan of using hashtags like boycott Chinese products, boycott Google, boycott Facebook, etc. Uh, actually, I made a video explaining why things aren't as easy as just boycotting something. Uh, here's the video, you can watch it. One of the reasons I quoted was, we don't have good Indian alternatives, but we need them. So I've always been a fan of hashtag support make in India. Looks like the government listened to me, took my advice. So basically, Niti Aayog, a government agency in India, has launched Digibox, which aims to be India's own Google Drive. And spoiler, it's super exciting and better than I thought. Let's talk all about it. But before that, I'm sure you guys have been hearing about this thing called Bitcoin. If you have no idea, well, it's something that you could have bought for 3.7 lakh rupees in March and sold for 17 lakh rupees this morning. Basically, it's a cryptocurrency that's trading in the market. Where to buy Bitcoin in India? That's where our sponsor BitBNS comes into play. It's a highly trusted exchange in India. BitBNS can facilitate purchase and selling of not just Bitcoins, but also several other cryptocurrencies such as Litecoin, Ethereum, Ripple, etc. Also, it's not like you have to buy a minimum of one Bitcoin. You can even buy 0.5 Bitcoin or 0.1 or even 0.001 Bitcoin. BitBNS offers several features such as margin trading options, fixed income plan, SIP in Bitcoin and so on. You can deposit the money via UPI and if you're profitable, you can withdraw directly to your bank account. So do check out BitBNS, link in the description, sign up and start investing. First things first, Digibox is a serious attempt by the government, by the developers, it doesn't seem like those temporary cloud storage services which offer insanely cheap storage like lifetime 5 TB storage for 1000 rupees uh, or something like that. Those are all just scams. Either the services will disappear after a couple of years and your pre precious data will also disappear along with them. You cannot even do anything because you probably wouldn't have read the terms and conditions before paying for those services. They would have cleverly included certain unreasonable terms. Digibox is not one of those services. At least they don't intend to be. Things may still accidentally go wrong. Why always negative thoughts? Negative thoughts. Okay, fine. It'll be good. Why I think they are serious about this is because number one, it's from the Indian government themselves. And number two, they're pitching this to businesses and enterprises and offering insane amounts of storage. So. I guess, you know, they have their storage inventory figured out. So what is Digibox good at? How good is it compared to Google Drive? The best thing about Digibox is the pricing. It's insanely inexpensive. By looking at this page, initially I thought we get 2 TB at just 30 rupees a month, but it's actually up to 2 TB. The exact plans can be viewed after you sign up and log into your account. You can click upgrade here and see the list of plans. So. 100 GB for just 30 rupees a month. Google Drive charges 130 rupees for, for the same 100 GB. Digibox also offers 500 GB for 90 rupees a month, 1 TB for 120 rupees and 2 TB for 199. In comparison, Google Drive charges 650 rupees for 2 TB storage. So Digibox is like three to four times cheaper and that's what makes it very compelling. Next. Digibox has created their own user interface, which may not be as good as Google Drive's, but uh, I do really appreciate them for going with a unique design. Uh, remember what Geo did with GeoMeet? That's definitely not the case here, and that you know deserves a lot of appreciation. Uh, using Digibox is pretty simple. Just log in to view your files. Uh, you can drag and drop individual or multiple files of multiple formats. There are two options to view them uh, and here's a neat filter option. You can filter by name, filter by size or by format. Nice. Managing files within Digibox is not that simple. Like there is no option to search within a folder or rename files or label folders. Google Drive has all of them by the way. Also certain things work only on the Digibox mobile app. Like on the app you can move something to another folder but the option doesn't appear when you visit Digibox on your computer. So 
Is Digibox something you should download and start using right away? Should you straight away upload all your important files and start managing them on Digibox? Well, not really. There are a number of issues or limitations. Number one, the app crashes on some phones. I myself faced it. Uh, the first time I signed up, I actually signed up on the computer because it did not work on my phone. The app just kept crashing. Uh, I even tried a reinstall and I also tried it on some other phones. Uh, I think it, it, it worked on like three out of five phones. So not a great success rate. Uh, and number two, the sign up process is extremely broken. You know, while signing up, you're supposed to receive OTP, but it doesn't arrive promptly. And uh, Digibox sometimes shows an error despite entering the correct OTP. I don't know why that happens. Number three, usually on any website or you know app, to log in, you either just need to enter your mobile number and uh, you just need to enter the OTP or the traditional way is entering email ID and password or username and password, right? Here on Digispace to log in, you need to enter something called Digispace, which is like username. So for me, it's technology jock. And then you need to enter your email ID, which Digibox calls username and password. So three things for logging in. Why? Like, it's, it's not even the industry standard. Like, the, the, like It's like proven method to just enter your email ID and password or mobile number and OTB. Why require two things like email ID as well as username? Number four, there is no proper session tracking. As in when you log into Digibox on one Chrome tab, if you open another Chrome tab and go to digibox.com, you have to sign in again. Why? <laughs> I mean, I understand if you close Chrome and then open it again and you are signed out of Digibox account, that's fine, understandable. But why, you know, uh, it is, I am logged into my Digibox account on one tab, you know, and that tab is actually active. And on the other tab, I have to log in again. So this is another limitation. And number five, while signing up, Digibox is asking for your address. Why do you need my address? So things like this is kind of making me doubt the government. Why do they want our address? I mean, they want our exact address. They want the pin code. They want the uh, the, the location, etc. Why? And number six, while viewing files, you know, for example, you are viewing a photo, uh, there is a fixed frame. So, you know, in case you are viewing a photo in portrait orientation, it won't be entirely visible. It doesn't adjust automatically. So. Uh, if it's a landscape, then fine. If it's a portrait photo, then you'll have to scroll to view the entire photo. So this is kind of, a, you know, it's a bit of an annoyance. Number seven, if you want to share any file that's on your Digibox, you cannot really share it with anybody. The other person also needs to have an account with Digibox and you have to manually assign access to their username. So whichever usernames you enter here, only those people will be able to view and manage the files that you share. Also, the way permissions work is not very clear as of now. However, Digibox offers a space where you can just upload files and enter the recipient's email ID and they will be able to download those files. It's kind of a WeTransfer clone. The user need not log in, uh, even you don't have to log in. Just upload your files, enter your email ID and the recipient's email ID, simple. But yeah, even if the files are already available on your Digibox, you still have to upload them again if you want to share it with someone who is not on Digibox. Multitude of issues or limitations. Actually, here are some reviews that people posted on the Play Store. Apparently, they've been facing a lot of other issues as well. And it's not really surprising, right? When you make the sign-up process and everything so complicated, things tend to go wrong. The fact that these guys messed up even some basic stuff kind of makes me doubt their backend infrastructure, uh, like how secure and how robust are those storage systems. Are they fail proof? Will our data be safe? Uh, but at the same time, I don't think we should cancel them or something. This is a great initiative, mostly because of the affordable pricing. Let's just cut them some slack, let them take a few months to fix everything and possibly add some new features like sharing files with others. I believe it's just a matter of time before it becomes very much usable. For now, I'm just planning to buy uh, the 100 GB plan because it's like just 30 rupees a month and store some not very sensitive or personal files. 
And if you are planning to uh, buy some storage plan on Digibox, you should probably do the same because we are not exactly sure of how safe and secure it is. Definitely let me know your thoughts about Digibox in the comment section. What about you? Do you like the initiative? Do you support it? And yeah, also subscribe to Technology Jock and hit the bell icon. I think this is a great initiative. Technology Jock YouTube channel bringing you some awesome tech updates, right? Right? Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Take care and bye.